So on the subject of product strategies, um, what is this concept of the product life cycle? Well, Phil, when I teach marketing, this concept of product life cycle is basically a model that I share with my students. It's, it kind of shows and chronicles the life of a brand or a product category over time. And it allows the marketer, I think, to anticipate different obstacles, different challenges they'll encounter during the life of this particular product. So is this some harebrained thing you made up or what? This is a common, common theory. Uh, it's, you'll see it in all different types of marketing textbooks. Okay. Um, and certainly it's in our textbook that we're using. Oh, okay, good. So can you walk me through the product life cycle? Yeah, well, let's take a look at the whiteboard again, and we'll look at the traditional product life cycle curve. And as you can see, there are four distinct phases. There's an introduction phase, a growth phase, maturity phase, and then a decline phase. And what we're doing in this chart is we're mapping out over time the revenues and profit for a product category or, or a brand. And as you can see in the, the introductory phase, sales are quite low to begin with and s sales slowly, ever so slowly begin to climb. Uh, during this introduction phase, there's some unique challenges for the marketer. One of these uh, challenges are there's typically a high failure rate for products that in the introduction phase. Uh, typically, during the introduction, there's very little competition. It's a new product. Uh, it hasn't drawn the interest yet of, of competition. And typically, we have limited distribution uh, of our product. So that's a challenge. And finally, we should expect, during the introduction phase, very high marketing costs, advertising, for example, to create awareness. And typically, our production costs will be quite high, since our production volume has not reached economies of scale yet. Okay. So once we, uh, if a company is successful in breaking through the introduction phase, they typically move into the, the growth phase. And during the, this growth phase, we see the sales start to increase at an increasing rate. And all bees fly to honey, love honey. Any success that a company has will draw competition. And so during this phase, we can expect competition and a few other challenges um, as we go through the growth phase. More competitors will en enter the market, We'll typically see more of a focus on brand advertising, trying to distinguish our product from that of the competitor's product and develop more brand loyalty to our product. Can you just pause for a moment and explain fly to honey, love honey? <laughs> I'm not going to explain. That just sounds like an interesting concept to me. You can't picture uh, f bees flying to honey. Uh, okay, that's, okay. That's another, bees, that's another okay, lecture. I got it. Uh, finally, um, during the growth phase, there's a strong focus on building distribution relationships with the channel. So after the growth phase, products will typically move into a, a mature stage of the life cycle. Uh, this is where sales, the sales rate begins to start slowing down a little bit. We don't see the 10, 12, 14 percent sales increases per year. And this stage also presents some unique challenges for the marketer. Some of these are that the, the market has reached saturation. We're not having sales increases. Marketers often want to look at ways to increase sales. How can we do that with existing products? So look for product adaptations or extensions, adding new features to the products, or building similar types of products that might appeal to niches that are underserved right now. Typically during the mature phase of the life cycle, we can expect heavy promotion costs, advertising, selling, um, sales promotion costs, just to maintain our market share. The one nice thing about the mature phase, we're do usually doing large production runs, so our, our production costs can be quite low. Okay. And ultimately, firms will find that their products move into the decline stage, and this is where we distinctly see that sales begin falling. So we're seeing lower and lower sales, profits begin to fall as well, and this is where the firm has to make some difficult decisions. Should we pull our marketing expenses? Should we just cut the expenses? And if not, how do we slowly reduce our expenses over time to keep the product slowly going and making some money? Um, and at some point, firms need to decide, should we just allow our product to die and just pull all the expenses and pull the product from the market? Just like that, huh? Can be. If it's, uh, the market's just dried up, there's no market interest in that product, you might want to cut your expenses right away. Hmm. Just kill, kill the project. So um, well, this makes sense. So what are the implications for marketing then? I, I think the product life cycle is just a roadmap for a marketing manager. 
it gives them a roadmap of ways to look to the future, to anticipate challenges they may, they may encounter as their product, as their brand moves through the life cycle. Okay. So can you give me a real life example of this? Well, you know, one example that I, I use, and I, I love popcorn at home, and popcorn, I would say, is a fairly mature product. It's in the mature uh, stage of the, of the life cycle. There's quite a bit of competition. The market is fairly saturated. Companies that are producing that product need to market quite heavily to maintain their share. They need to offer many price allowances and deals to the distributors for them to continue carrying the product. Uh, and the production costs are quite low. In addition, those firms, those popcorn companies, are looking for ways to adapt their product, different flavors, different uh, ways to make your popcorn at home that, that perhaps is easier to pop, and trying to differentiate themselves from the competition in this mature phase. Okay, so I need some clarification on one thing, though, because you talked about popcorn, and that seems more like a category to me. Um, does this apply just to individual products or to broader categories? Well, you're right. The popcorn could be a product category, but the product lifecycle model can be applied to product categories. It can be applied to individual brands. It can be used in a multitude of ways just to anticipate those marketing challenges. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, Greg. Thanks for that illuminating lecture. You're welcome, Phil. Hope you found it helpful. Yeah, it did. <laughs>